What's going on friends? Sam Pred is back once again. Today we're looking at a brand new multicolour bed slinger from Creality. It's just in the background here. And this is a printer which I would say is probably best for newcomers. And Creality, as the name suggests, is saying hi to 3D printing. I've had this machine for just over a month now and for transparency it was sent to me free of charge for review. That being said though I do want to take a moment to thank my amazing sponsors Polymaker and PCBWay.com for their ongoing support. Now quick question, are you a maker? Well, certainly if you are and you've got a 3D printing project in mind, you might want to think about heading over to PCBWay.com, where innovation meets quality. Whether it's custom PCBs, 3D printing or CNC machining, they have got you covered. Bringing your ideas to life with fast and reliable service, perfect for creators just like you. Visit PCBWay.com to start building today. So what does Creality have on offer? Let's look at the highs and the lows and, well, let's get straight on into this one. You are watching a master at work. Creality, old Creality. What do we have here then? Well, in short, it's a 260 by 260 by 300 speedy i3 style printer capable of impressive speeds of up to 500 millimeters per second, and that's 12,000 millimeters squared on the acceleration. All this while running X and Y on linear rails. Now, I'm fairly certain that I caught a glimpse of this machine by accident during my trip to China last year. And it makes sense as the R&D team behind this one were also responsible for the K2 range of printers. Now this one, however, is packed with a few standout features that rivals others on the market. One key feature, of course, is the possibility of printing up to 16 colors on an i3 platform, which is quite a rare feat. Not only that, but the bed size has also been increased from what you might have originally found on an OG Ender. Including inside this combo is one CFS unit, which is capable of printing four colors. These can be off the shelf filaments or can be Creality's RFID type filaments. And whilst you're not locked into using Creality filament, the RFID feature currently does require it. On the unboxing and setup, and while the design isn't groundbreaking, the ease of getting it out of the box and getting it ready to print is certainly worth mentioning. Assembly is a breeze, four hex screws into the frame with a touch of cable management and you're pretty much ready to go within minutes. The printhead extruder has quite a unique look. The fan intake resembles a jet engine paired with the spinning Creality logo for a sleek, modern aesthetic. The lead screws are cleverly hidden inside of the robust frame, adding to a clean and more professional look. There's also a monitoring camera and light on the right hand side of the gantry. And on the left, we find a device which I'm calling the extrusion eviction device, which purges and flicks filament away during loading and also color changes. During the review, I didn't use the above top filament holder as I solely relied on the CFS unit but that is available should you wish to use it and scan the filament on the side of the printer using the RFID module. Again, for Creality filament only, currently. Aesthetically, this printer does look great and it certainly has nods towards the old Ender 3 V3, certainly around the base. The redesigned extruder houses three fans and a well-lit plug-in board, making replacements easier if needed. Inside the extruder, metal gears and a built-in filament cutter add to the functionality. The filament runout sensor is also conveniently located up at the top. At the rear of the bed, there is a metal contact plate. While the exact purpose remains unclear, it does seem to play a role in leveling, as it makes the connection before wiping it on the rear wiper brush. On the thermal side, the hot end reaches up to 300 degrees, while the 1000 watt heated bed reaches 100 degrees. Now, accessing the printer can be done in a couple of ways. There are plugins for Orca Slicer, or if that means nothing to you, Creality Print will also allow you to see the printer in the Devices tab. This is a good option because it also allows you to see the onboard camera. The alternative way, however, is to access the printer locally, and that's via your local IP address, followed by colon 4408, which then launches you into Fluid. Video streaming, however, is closed off in the same way that it is on the K2 Plus. The good news is though, if you need to, or if you want to tinker with the firmware, Creality has left that open for the most part to allow you to do just that. So what about quality and print performance? Well, actually, since getting it out of the box, all of the prints pretty much have exceeded my expectations, especially with challenging parts like overhangs, performing better in some cases than the K2 Plus. So this is a little bit more interesting. This one is on the high, and this one was actually printed on the K2 Plus. This is in uh, orange PLA by Prusa. And as you can see here, one of the important factors overall is the ability to do overhang. So K2 Plus and the high, as you can see there, hopefully, hopefully you can see there that the overhangs on this are actually pretty bad. But on the high, they're certainly more or less perfect. 
That all said and done, and well, you know this is coming, we have experienced some blockages with the CFS system. And the problem I've had is where the filament develops a groove in the feeder mechanism on the bottom of the CFS. The gear that pushes the filament up through the buffer and beyond, well, it does seem to have this issue mainly with tightly wound filament spools. What happens is this will basically erode and cut into the filament. So what's been happening is, of course, the filament's been going back and forth, but I haven't looked at the channel of the filament. Now, what we find when we take this out here is that there'd be a piece of the filament that basically has been eaten and it's not being able to be fed because this doesn't have anywhere to feed it to. So what we've got to do is cut the filament, reroute it, and hopefully um, it will start working again. So this is basically a great example. This is where the gear has eaten that part of the filament because it wasn't able to pull it through properly. Um, and as I pulled it out, it snapped. So that's where we were getting this um, blockage. And this caused some confusing delays as I had assumed that the blockage was perhaps in the extruder. So I'd say it's certainly worth checking the feeder if you do run into similar issues. The Creality High's price point, I would say is certainly competitive with the base model coming in at $299 and the combo coming in at $469. Considering that the CFS retails for $299 as a standalone unit, the combo is a solid deal because ultimately you're paying $170 for the printer. Overall, I'm pleased with the print quality. Purging between colors could use some tuning in the slicer, especially when transitioning from a strong color like red to white. This isn't unique to the high, but it's something to consider. One issue issue that I did face, and it was the same with the K2 Plus, was on the power recovery. As seen in my tests, while they're not perfect, it did continue to print. However, if you're anything like me, this print will certainly be heading for the bin. After several firmware upgrades, I tested it again with the STL Flix Tiger. Here the power fail recovery did work a little better, but I think ultimately a UPS might be still worth investing in. If the printer wasn't interrupted, well the prints came out brilliantly, as shown here with this pink lion. If your files are well designed, the printer certainly delivers great results. On the feature side, and certainly for people that are coming into the 3D printing world for the very first time, Creality seems to have put a strong emphasis on addressing common challenges that users have faced in the past. Gone are the days with struggling with manual bed leveling, a feature that often intimidates first time users. Creality has replaced this with a far more streamlined and automatic approach, ensuring that your smoother and user friendly experience is right there from the start. In addition to simplifying setup, Creality has embraced modern convenience like remote control and monitoring of your printer. Whether you're checking on a print from another room or controlling the machine via your phone, these features add a new level of flexibility. The integration of AI-powered functionalities also demonstrates Creality's commitment to staying at the cutting edge of 3D printing technology. And having said that about AI, in fact, this machine doesn't have a huge number of AI features, unlike the K1 and the K2+. Plus but it does make up for in detection of filament tangles and any print errors. Now, during my tests, the print pause and continue absolutely work to treat. One of the standout features is being able to print up to 16 colors using four CFS systems. And of course, this isn't just a gimmick, but it adds an exciting layer of creativity and potential for unique projects. While this feature might not appeal to most hobbyists or artists, it does open up possibilities for those who want to experiment with more complex and visually striking prints. And finally, the ease of setup cannot be overstated here. Creality has focused on creating a seamless out of the box experience, making this easier than ever for beginners to get started. Creality has also managed to strike a balance between accessibility and innovation, bringing a fresh and engaging vibe to the market. So what about the parts that I didn't like about the printer? Now, although I do believe overall the high is a solid machine, there are some areas that I think could be improved upon. Power recovery issues aside, the achievable print quality is excellent, but still could benefit from further refinements. With some firmware upgrades and profile tuning, I believe there is room to push this machine even further. My biggest concern, however, lies within the waste generated during the prints. This isn't something that's exclusive to Creality, it's an industry-wide issue. But if you're producing more waste material that you can use in an actual print, it highlights a serious inefficiency. Without some sort of tool changer or alternative method, tackling this problem becomes difficult. There are ways to mitigate this, of course. Clever file or project design can divert purge material into infills of the prints, reducing overall waste. Alternatively, by maximizing the number of models that are on the build plate, you can minimize the frequency of purges, effectively flushing only once for multiple models. These are small workarounds, but worth considering if you're conscientious about material use. Another one of my gripes was printer noise, specifically from the filament cutter. Each time it purges, it clicks and it's driven me mad. 
Now, at first, it wasn't too distracting, but when you're witnessing 650 purges in a single project that constantly clicks, it does absolutely drive you mad. Now, in a quiet workspace or studio, it becomes especially noticeable and somewhat grating over time. That said, those frustrations don't entirely overshadow the printer's potential. And maybe with some thoughtful updates and a bit of ingenuity on the user's part, there's still a lot to appreciate here. Okay, so just to go through the screen menus, as you can see here, this is the main screen. There's a couple of things up at the top here. There's your Wi-Fi and your camera. Again, you can't push those. To set your temperature, again, that's relatively easy. And your bed, that displays that, of course. If you want to go into your file system, that's just here. And you can see the files that I've been printing. If you plug your USB in, well, that's where you'll see that. And these are the histories and things that I've started and stopped and played around with over the past couple of weeks. Moving down to here, again, here's your movement settings. This is where you can set your material. So if you had the external spool holder, then you can put that into there. Or if you had the RFID on the side, then you can hit that as well. This is basically where you set your um, parameters for your CFS. On the cooling side, this is basically where you turn your fan up and down. It's a bit of a weird place to have it, but that's where they've decided to put it. Let's have a look next. This is the system. Again, there's a bunch of information on there, screen brightness, how long you want your screen on for, language. Self-check gives you input shaping and also auto bed leveling. Route information, if you want to route this, then you can do that, of course. If you don't know what that means, then well, we'll look at that another time. Time zone settings, just in here. Version check-in, we're running at the moment 1.1.0.38. You can reset it to default put it into expert mode, and that basically allows you then to do your Z offset, your flow calibration, and your PID tuning on your nozzle and your bed. Again, a few little bits of information there. Um, insert detection, startup detection, automatic refill, and then just a little bit about the printer. And as you can see here, I've been printing for eight days, two hours and 11 minutes. That's gonna go up, of course, before this is all finished. Um, onto network, that's basically just where you set your network settings. It's my IP address. And there's your camera information. And basically, if you decide to export your print files and you want to see the time lapses, to be quite frank with you, the quality of the camera is appalling. Um, sorry, Creality, but it is. Uh, and the light setup in the dark is just dreadful. I'll show you a few examples, though. Camera settings is easy. Again, just for your time lapse, whether or not that's on or off. Again, there's no AI functionality from the camera on this system. So if you're looking to start a print, I'm just about to do one now. In fact, it's a custom setup for somebody that I'm doing something for. Uh, it's a kettlebell with some uh, names and stuff on it. So we're going to hit is calibration and CFS, and then we're going to hit next. And we're just going to choose a couple of random colors because this isn't the real deal. This is just a test. Hit print. And away we go. The launch price here is certainly very reasonable. And if you think perhaps that this printer might be the one for you, please consider using my affiliate link in the description below. You'll also find any discount codes that Creality have provided me with to share with you. Not only does this help support the channel and keep things running smoothly, but it also allows me to continue bringing more content like this. And as I reflect on the Creality High, there are a few points that certainly come to mind. One that stands out is just how far the 3D printing industry has advanced over the years. It's remarkable to see how much innovation has been packed into a machine just like this. Yet it also makes me question why bed slingers are still a staple and continue to evolve. Perhaps it's because they're less complicated, require fewer parts, or simply have few components that can fail, which ultimately helps keep the costs down. That being paired with the CFS system, which is already integrated into Creality's ecosystem, it does make the high an attractive option. Coming from machines that were once capped at 60 millimeters per second to machines like the high, pushing an impressive 500 millimeters per second, which is truly mind bending. It highlights just how much technology has evolved. Similarly, the introduction to color printing, which I find vastly wasteful, does still represent a significant step forward. It's crazy to see how much advancements are readily available in this market. I can still remember a time where IDEX printers were just delivering on two colors, and at the time that felt revolutionary, and now I feel really old. I was there 3,000 years ago. And bizarrely, it wasn't that long ago. And if you were using an IDEX and managed to perfectly align the extruders, you might have ended up with a semi-decent print. Now, comparing that to what's possible now with the high and the 16 color capacities, it really shows you how far things have come. That said, if I was starting my 3D printing journey today with the high, instead of the end of three, it wouldn't necessarily be that clear on how far we have come. 
The advancements over the past nine years have been significant, and the height is a testament of how much more accessibility to features and fun pack 3D printers could become. So we are going to continue forth with the Creality High. I've got some models on there at the moment that I'm printing, and hopefully in the next couple of days you will start to see those on the social media networks. Um, you can find those obviously in the description down below. Let me know what you think about this product. Do you think this hits the right notes? Is it for you? Is it for somebody else? Or are you just going to pass it by completely? Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you next time. Bye for now. You are watching a master at work.